Which is the right major for you, electrical or chemical engineering? This is what we will be talking about today, but before we get started, please don't forget to smash the bell and subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future content just like this that are going to lead you to success. Obviously, there's no right or wrong answer when it comes to what our passion is, but a lot of the times that might be an unknown until a later stage in our life. So it's important to understand all the implications that come with choosing a specific major. Electrical and chemical engineering are two of the main branches of engineering. And I gotta admit that both seem like attractive majors on paper. But let's dive deeper into the curriculum, job outlook, salary, and prestige to see if these majors are really as attractive as they appear to be so you can make an educated decision for yourself and not have any regrets about dropping 100 grand on a wrong degree after college. Let's start off with an easy question. If you've taken physics class in high school, try to remember if you enjoy the electricity and magnetism portion. If your answer is yes in designing and analyzing the electrical hardware and circuitry and products like iPhones, cars, and airplanes sounds interesting to you, then you electrical engineering is probably a good choice. On the flip side, if physics is not really your thing, but you enjoy chemistry in high school, specifically the structure and reactivity of molecules, different types of reactions, as well as all of the different labs that you did, like pH measurement, chromatography, and spectroscopy, then chemical engineering is likely right for you. Again, this is just a preliminary evaluation to at least point you in the right direction of either of the two engineering disciplines. Now, in order to determine if electrical or chemical engineering is a better fit for for you, we must first know exactly what these two things are. So what in the world is electrical engineering? It's a very versatile branch of engineering focusing on the study, design, and application of devices and systems which use electricity, electronics, and electromagnetism such as electric motors, radar and navigation systems, communication systems, and power generation equipment spanning the aerospace, automotive, construction, consumer electronics, defense, food, medical, and energy industries. Now let's talk about chemical engineering. What in the world is that? It's a specialized discipline encompassing the translation of molecular information into the creation and manufacturing of new processes and products such as plastics, dyes, drugs, fertilizers, petrochemicals, food, and even the development of clean energy sources. As a chemical engineer, it all starts with their foundational knowledge in chemistry, biology, physics, and math to create innovative solutions to important industrial and societal problems in a plethora of industries, including healthcare, energy, environmental, electronics, advanced materials, biotechnology, construction, food, defense, and chemical process. Now that you have a high level understanding of these two disciplines, how does the curriculum for these two majors stack up against each other? As you probably can guess, both electrical and chemical engineering students take the general set of engineering core courses during their freshman and sophomore year like math, which includes calculus one and two, multivariate calculus, differential equations, statistics, linear algebra, physics one, which is mechanics, and physics two, which is electricity and magnetism, as well as basic chemistry. Moving on to the common engineering courses between these two majors, you will have to take programming with a common language such as MATLAB or Python for solving engineering problems and an introduction design course intended to build a problem-solving mindset, computer skills, and familiarity with elements of engineering design. From this point on, the courses between these two majors will begin to diverge and become more specialized. So as an electrical engineering major, you will take electromagnetic systems covering time-varying electric and magnetic fields, Maxwell equations, electromagnetic waves, remote sensing applications, radio frequency coaxial cables, optical fibers, microwave sources and resonators, antennas, and wireless communication systems. Signals and systems class will involve tons of math and introduce continuous and discrete time signals and systems, convolution sum and integral, stability of systems, frequency domain analysis, filtering and sampling, Laplace and Z transform and linear feedback systems. You will also take intro to electronics that talks all about diodes, different types of circuits like bipolar junction transistor and metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor, amplifiers, digital inverters and logic gates, biasing and small signal analysis, as well as microelectronic design techniques. 
Intro to Logic Design will be another required course that introduces hardware building blocks used in digital computers, such as Boolean algebra, combinatorial and sequential circuits, decoders and encoders, multiplexers, programmable logic devices, read-only memory, counters, and Verilog hardware description language. Like all engineering majors, you'll take a year-long senior design team-based project design course where you will work in teams comprised of three to five students with a potential mix of electrical and computer engineering majors and a company to solve a problem in some area of electrical engineering. For example, this group of electrical engineering students at my school created a device leveraging image processing circuits, sensors, and a web app together with a medical company to treat jaundice in infants using blue photolight therapy. You'll also generally have to take three to five mandatory electives from a list of classes. And if you're interested, here is the list of courses that we could take at my school. So as a chemical engineering major, you will have to take a lot of chemistry related courses. In addition to general chemistry, you'll have to take one or two organic chemistry and inorganic chemistry courses, as well as a general biochemistry course. Also expect to take a basic thermodynamics class introducing state variables, work, heat, entropy and free energy, as well as a chemical and biological engineering thermodynamics class focusing on thermodynamics of multi-component, multi-phase chemical and biological systems. You probably already know that chemical engineering is very hands-on, so you will for sure be taking a project-based class where you work in teams on a project and applied chemical engineering research suggested by local industry. For example, if your team was interested in polymer science, a potential project idea could be characterizing the physical properties of natural and silicone rubber. More advanced courses that you would take as a junior and senior include separation processes, chemical kinetics and reactor design, and integrated chemical engineering that presents and solves chemical engineering problems in an industrial context such as process design and dynamics. So the question to ask yourself is, are you more interested in the design, development, and testing of rigid and flexible PCB technology, hardware, power, and control systems, and using oscilloscopes and other tools to debug subsystems in say an iPad or Boeing 747? Or are you more interested in chemical process design and improvement like designing reactors with the appropriate flow rate, volume, pressure, and temperature to maximize the production of a certain chemical while minimizing waste, energy consumption, water usage, and depletion of non-renewable raw materials. So now that we have a good sense of the curriculum, let's compare the annual salaries and see what the current and future job outlook looks like for these two types of engineers. Let's begin with the salary breakdown for electrical engineers. We see that the median salary is $103,390, while the lowest 10% and highest 10% made $64,870 and $159,520 respectively. Obviously, things like years of experience and work location will contribute to this salary gap, so someone with 10 plus years experience working in California or New York will probably be amongst the top 5% of earners. The total number of available electrical engineering jobs in 2020 was 313,200 and is expected to see a 7% increase in job growth between 2020 and 2030, which is average. Now moving on to chemical engineering, we see that the median salary is $108,540 while the lowest 10% and the highest 10% made $68,430 and $168,960 respectively. And the median salary of electrical engineers is about $5,000 less than chemical engineers. The total number of available chemical engineering jobs in 2020 was 26,300, which is 12 times less than the number of available electrical engineering jobs. So job security is not great for chemical engineers. It's expected to see a 9% increase in job growth between 2020 and 2030, which is slightly above average compared to electrical engineering in the overall engineering field of 7%. Electrical engineering beat chemical engineering in terms of number of available jobs pretty badly, and job security is something you will not have to worry about. Aside from the curriculum, salary, and job outlook, the last component we'll look at is prestige. For some people, it's all about the respect. Now the way I've defined prestige is how well known is the company you work at. And I assume that the larger the company, 
the more prestige it has. For all intents and purposes, we'll assume that the job title is not correlated with prestige. Consequently, I have evaluated prestige solely based on the total number of top 100 Fortune 500 companies that offer electrical and chemical engineering jobs. It came down to the wire and here are the results. 38 out of the 100 companies offered electrical engineering jobs including Amazon, Apple, Alphabet, Exile Mobile, AT&T, Microsoft, Verizon, Ford Motor, General Motors, Comcast, Chevron, Dell, Marathon, Facebook, Johnson & Johnson, General Electric, Intel, Procter & Gamble, Lockheed Martin, Valero Energy, Boeing, HP, Raytheon, Tyson Foods, Pfizer, Caterpillar, Oracle, Dow, General Dynamics, Northrop Grumman, John Deere, Abbott Laboratories, Exelon, Coca-Cola, Honeywell, Thermo Fisher, 3M, and Tesla. By contrast, 35 out of the Wander companies offer chemical engineering jobs, including Apple, Exxon Mobil, Ford, GM, Chevron, Dell, Marathon, Johnson & Johnson, General Electric, Intel, Procter & Gamble, PepsiCo, Philips 66, Lockheed Martin, Valero Energy, Boeing, HP, Raytheon, Merck, Tyson, Pfizer, Caterpillar, Energy Transfer, Dow, General Dynamics, Nike, Northrop Grumman, John Deere, Abbott Laboratories, Exelon, Coca-Cola, Honeywell, Thermo Fisher, 3M, and Tesla. All right, summarizing everything we talked about, the curriculum for electrical and chemical engineering are neck and neck in terms of difficulty. What's common between these two majors is the math and engineering problem solving mindset. While electrical engineering classes focus on equipping students with knowledge in the design and development of electrical devices and products, Chemical engineering classes are geared towards students wishing to gain molecular knowledge for chemical process, design, and improvement. Moving on to salary, electrical engineers and chemical engineers make similar amounts of money where the median salary for electrical engineers is $103,390, while for chemical engineers, it's $108,540. Obviously, if you work at one of the big tech companies, you will make a lot more and these numbers are no longer accurate, but in general, they hold true for most companies. Finally, the job security that comes with electrical engineering tops chemical engineering by a long shot, but the prestige level that comes with both majors are excellent. At the end of the day, the goal is to pick a major that you can build a career out of and enjoy doing for a lifetime. There's really no right or wrong answer when it comes to choosing electrical or chemical engineering. You might be someone who already knows that your dream job is to work at Apple as an electrical engineer to design printed circuit boards and flex cables that go into an iPhone 20. Or you want to work as a chemical engineer to develop a scalable, stable, and cost-effective biosensor chemical manufacturing process at a big medical company. I think knowing what you want already in college is fantastic, but rarely is this the case and more often times than not, you won't know exactly what you want until after working several full-time jobs or internships. If this applies to you, then I definitely recommend going with electrical engineering because the job security blows chemical engineering out of the water. Alright, as always, thank you so much for watching and if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.